What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Fadi, this is Booster Forward. If you are new here, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope you enjoy the content, and if you do, make sure you subscribe. If you are already a subscriber, you know I appreciate the love and support. All right, so in today's video, I am going to do something very informative, in my opinion, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. It's going to be testing this vehicle in minus 1000 DA because I want to understand the effects of DA on the car's performance. If you guys remember, when I was in Florida, um, it was about plus 2000 DA when I was running drag times in McLaren 720S on the drag strip. And now we're getting about minus 1000 DA. So the question now is, when I go from plus 2000 DA in Florida, where the car ran 60 to 130 in 5.31 seconds, what is it gonna do here in minus 1000 DA for the 60 to 130? What kind of effect does the DA have on the car's performance? You know, we always talk about DA this, DA that, and I've done it before. I mean, you guys saw my last video, I talked about DA, but honestly, I want to know what does it do to the car's performance? Does it really make that much of a difference? Is the difference bi uh, small, is it big? I don't know, I wanna see, but in order to do that, we have to make sure it's an apples to apples comparison from the time that I was at the track. So here's what I did to ensure that this is going to be as most of an apples to apples comparison as possible. First thing is the tune. The tune on the 911 Turbo S is exactly the same, has not been touched since the car left Florida. So that's staying exactly the same. Next, we're talking about tire pressure. The tire pressure has been untouched uh, since it came off the trailer. I'm going to make sure right now because I haven't started the car in a while I haven't driven it in about two or three days So I want to make sure that the tire pressure is where it needs to be at the track It was about 30 psi So I am going to make sure that it's at 30 psi right now to ensure that the tire pressure Mimics the same tire pressure as when it was in Florida at the track All right So next are some things that are going to be a little bit different But I really do think that these things are going to be negligible um, on the effect of the accuracy and the first thing is going to be the slope of the road. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to mimic exactly the slope of the track, but you never know, I might get lucky, we'll see. But I am going to try my best to ensure that the slope of the street where we do this test on is going to be within a half a percent of the slope of the track. Next is going to be road surface. So obviously on the track, there's VHT laid down, which means that there's more rolling resistance. And you may think that that's going to be an advantage on the street, given that there's no VHT, there's no glue, and there's going to be less rolling resistance. But you have to keep in mind that on the track, it's extremely smooth. There's not a single bump on the dragway where on the street, there's going to be bumps, there's going to be cracks and so on. So any advantage that we have um, on the street from not having as much rolling resistance is basically negated because of the fact that it has bumps and cracks and it's going to be uh, not as smooth as the track. So in that aspect, I do think at the end of the day, it's basically a wash. So the last thing is going to be the launch of the car. So when I was on the track, uh, obviously I was launching the car and that's how I obtained the 60 to 130 in 5.31 seconds. But this time around, I am going to go from a roll from about a 40 mile an hour roll in second gear. But I don't think that's going to make a difference at all because at the end of the day, at 60 miles an hour, I'm going to be full send, wide open throttle. So that's not going to make much of a difference, if any at all. All right, guys, so all there is left to do now is just wait until the nighttime arrives. Wake up Pablo because he's lazy and sleeping to get him in the driver's side so he can uh, pilot the car in Mexico and get some 60 to 130 runs. And hopefully what is going to be about minus 1000 DA, it'll be nice to see a 3000 DA spread and see what the effect is on uh, its performance. So I'm going to strap on the cameras and put the draggy in the car. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. So I am ready to head out right now. Um, it's about 10 o'clock and the DA is looking pretty good. It's not exactly a thousand. Um, you know, last night about this time, it was about 850. So I was hoping we'd catch about a thousand, but unfortunately right now it's not a thousand, but it's pretty close. So check this out. Um, so as you can see here, we got the TRC app. We go to the weather, we go to refresh. So it's at 643, minus 643. So I was hoping for the uh, 3000 spread of DA. Unfortunately, I did not get that, but it doesn't really matter, right? The, the fact is that 
In Florida, I raced the car at plus 2,000 DA. Right now, I am racing it at minus uh, 600, basically 50 DA. So we're still gonna be able to get good data and see the effects of lower DA on the car's performance. Got Pablo in the car, he's sleeping still, he's tired. Let's go and see what happens. All right guys, so I am back from testing with Pablo last night and I am so excited just because of the fact that now I have actual numbers to back up any of my claims. So I'm no longer going to guess how much of an improvement there's gonna be between uh, a place that has plus 2000 DA and a place that has something of a better DA because now for my testing, I know exactly what the numbers are. So the car went from plus 2000 DA running 60 to 130 in 5.31 seconds to 4.95 seconds in minus 700 DA, which is a 0.36 second of an improvement from 60 to 130. So also something to keep in mind as well was that last night when Pablo went out testing in the car, he only made two runs. Doesn't have a lot of seat time, doesn't have perfected shift points and so forth. But when I was at the track in Florida, I ran the car over and over and over again. And out of the nine times that I've ran, 5.31 was the best. So I think with more seat time in this car, uh, Pablo could have gone maybe 4.8, which would have made the improvement um, from plus 2000 DA to minus 700 DA even greater than what it is. But I'm not going to speak about hypothetical numbers. Let's talk about the numbers that came from last night and let's check out the findings. So the DA in Florida was plus 2000. The DA in Mexico was minus 700. The DA improvement is 2700 feet. 60 to 130 in Florida was 5.31 seconds. 60 to 130 in Mexico was 4.95 seconds. That is a 60 to 130 improvement of 0.36 seconds. So from that, we can conclude that there was a 0.13 second improvement from 60 to 130 for every 1,000 foot DA improvement. All right guys, there you have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Now every time you guys are out and about and racing your cars in miserable DA, you can always reference back to this video and you have a better understanding of how to calculate how much quicker your car would go had it been at a better DA. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. I really appreciate it. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure you are subscribed and your notifications are on so you don't miss any of my uploads. Also, pretty soon, Pablo and I will be going out to Mexico in the Porsche 911 Turbo S. We will be running some pretty uh, fast cars. I think you guys are going to enjoy those races. So I'll see you guys next video.